do you believe it is fundamentally correct and responsible for any one person to hold all the info regarding UFOs, ufology? Cue the music. Hey, like I said, this is episode 85 of the UFO Report. I mentioned last week I'm going to try to do three episodes this week. And the reason being is because I got a little bit of information that I wanted to share with you guys. So it's not necessarily current news, but it's news that, I mean, it was news to me. So I'm thinking it might be news for some of you. But it continues to tie in this Robert Bigelow thing, this, uh, this need for him to take all the money that he makes and get every angle on ufology. I know what you guys are going to say. So fucking what? He's got the money. He's doing it. But he isn't sharing a damn thing with us. That's what my problem is with money bags. He's not sharing the info. And there's something I found out about him. Which I'm going to bring to this particular Monday episode. So that you guys know that the guy, he's like a, a black hole of UFO information. He's taking all the information for himself, for his corporation, and it looks like he's trying to build something from it. He's That laugh that he had in that interview was not so much a laugh of a deranged, crazy-ass fucking old guy. It was, it was a laugh of, I know something you don't. Something that can change your life. Something that can change the life of everyone out there. And I am the richest rubber dicker with all the news. And wouldn't you love to know what I know? Before we get into what was shared with me recently, I want you to take the time to follow me on Twitter at UFO Buster Radio, on Instagram at Manny Moonraker, on the Facebook pages UFO Buster Radio and Manny Moonraker. And if you feel froggy, and you want to get into a, U, a UFO group, UBR Truth Seekers is the place to go, but it is not for the faint of heart because you will be challenged if you post a rubber dicking post. I'm sorry, it, that's just the way it is. Like I said before, that's the way a group should be. It's not so much that you can post whatever the fuck you want, especially if it's a really, you know, totally hoax story. It's a group where you can challenge each other. Really look at things from the perspective of the of the entire community. But in the interim, you know, you might get a couple of cuss words and someone might get all hyper. But overall, people do respect each other. But, you know, join the group. Just come on in, chew the fat, and have fun. So let's go into this thing with Robert Bigelow. And you see it in the title of the podcast because I want to thank first Tommy Voltaire for sharing this video. The video link is in the description. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have an audio clip for this one. You'll actually have to go and see it. And the reason why is because most of this audio clip is just going to be the Tic Tac UFO story slash Pentagon news thing that, you know, blew people's minds. But in that video, there's a little interview with someone of the name which may be familiar to some of you. And his name is John Lear. John Lear has a lot of information that he's sharing from kind of like a uh, aviator perspective regarding what he heard in the Tic Tac video. And I can give you a preview right now. He's almost leaning to the point that the Tic Tac video that was used by the Pentagon to the Stars Academy and all that kind of good stuff that was released recently is hashtag fake news. And think about that for a second. How do you... How do you come to the conclusion that a video that was apparently held by the Pentagon, stolen, or borrowed on the false pretense, turns out to be fake news? Especially when, even on this podcast, we played the interview of the pilot that had the experience, their first-hand account about what happened, what they felt, what did the other pilots feel. But is it fake news? It's something that we're going to have to grapple with 
and we may not get to it. We might not get to it because we've been promised additional videos, more information, evidence, and here it is, January 15th, and we've got nada. So we'll see what happens. We need to get more news. So the headline for this podcast is Robert Bigelow and Bob Lazar formed a corporation called Zeta Reticuli 2. Now, one of the members of UBR Truth Seekers, Aaron, we've talked about Zeta Reticuli 2. And the reason why is because Aaron, he finds a lot of references to Zeta Reticuli. So Zeta Reticuli seems to be kind of like an important part of the ufology story. The problem with Zeta Reticuli is that it, it's 39 light years away. And I think it's like 220 trillion miles. Give or take a millennia, I guess. So no way in hell that uh, any of us are going to get any answers from Zeta Reticuli 1 or 2 regarding what Bob Bigelow and Bob Lazar were doing. So we know the story of Bob Lazar is basically he claimed that he worked at Area 51. He saw a couple of things, kind of wacky. He saw a UFO. Uh, he saw the people at Area 51 trying to reverse engineer this thing. And he also talked about an element, Element 115. Highly unstable element, only available in really tiny, small amounts. Now, according to Stan Friedman, Bob Lazar's claims were bullshit. He called him a rubber dicker. Last year, I did send Stan Freeman an email about Bob Lazar, and he still maintains that Bob Lazar is a fake. He's a rubber dicker, and he lied about his credentials. He lied about his education. And so he feels that there's no way he could be telling the truth about Area 51. Cha-ching. What can you do? But where this story gets crazy is when we put in Robert Bigelow. So we know Robert Bigelow has been taking UFO reports from the FAA. We know Robert Bigelow took over the Skinwalker Ranch. We know Robert Bigelow has some kind of hand in what's going on with all this, this newfound pseudo-disclosure. We also know that Robert Bigelow is involved with these so-called materials that were found that people are saying are part of UFOs and is being hidden out in Las Vegas. What I didn't know is that Bob Lazar teamed up with Robert Bigelow and they formed the Zeta Reticular II Corporation in Nevada. Now this happened years ago, but apparently the story goes that Lazar snuck out some element 115. Now I just said that this apparently is a highly unstable element. It's not available in very much quantity, so it's kind of hard to believe that the Bob Lazar stole from Area 51 element 115. That almost sounds like he managed to rubber dick Bob Bigelow. Other parts of the story is that no one really knows what exactly they meant to do with Element 115. But they formed a corporation. And what people assumed was happening was that Robert Bigelow was looking for a way to use Element 115 commercially. So there's a lot of questions about this. But what we see is that there is a long history of Robert Bigelow chasing ufology elements, chasing UFOs, chasing aliens, chasing people who say that they've witnessed things. The man, I think at this point, after seeing the thing with him and Lazar, this is Zeta Reticuli too, the man is obsessed with UFOs and aliens. And the problem is he has the money to do research that no one else can. Money talks, bullshit walks, everyone else gets probed. So the other thing we need to know about Zeta Reticuli, like I said, is 39 light years away. It is a two-star system, and the two stars are Zeta-1 and Zeta-2 Reticuli. People usually just uh, refer to the whole system as Zeta Reticuli, and these are what they call fifth magnitude stars, which is, to the naked eye, you can't see shit. You look up to the stars, they know damn way you're going to see either one or two. You're just plumb fucked at that point. As a matter of fact, the story goes that because they hang in the southern sky, you really won't even be able to see it from Mexico City. So you people in Mexico City, you have no idea what the hell Zeta Reticuli is. The other thing about Zeta Reticuli that's very fascinating and kind of famous, and I have a link for you to read for those of you who are not aware of the story, it is the incident of 1961 of Betty and Barney Hill. 
And listen, you guys are not rubber dickers. You know this story. In 1961, apparently Betty and Barney Hill, this lovely couple who were driving down a dark road in the uh, in the White Mountains. And, you know, they were loving on each other, making that drive. Little, little kissy poo here and there. And uh, all of a sudden, a UFO showed up. The UFO showed up, took them away, probed them for all they were worth, and put them back in their little car. So they experienced a bit of a lapse in time. The connection to Zeta Reticuli was that Betty Hill actually recalled some of her uh, examinations. She recalled some of the conversations with her abductors. This abductee drew a map. And not just any map, she drew a star map from memory in 1964 under psychoanalysis. That's when they fuck with your mind. While her mind was getting probed, this star map turns out to be of a planet orbiting Zeta Reticuli. And according to her, her little abductors, her probe masters, came from that area. There's more to this story, because there's always doubters, there's people who believe, there's evidence, there's psychoanalysis, there's a whole lot of shit that goes to the story, and it is one of those stories where I think people more lean to believing than disbelieving. But there's always doubters, there's always... People who call it a hoax. And in 1961, I mean, come on, really. You're driving down the White Mountains in the dark, hanging out with your boo-boo. Really? You're going to think about getting probed? That just doesn't make sense to me. But maybe that's the kind of relationship they had. And maybe, you know, Barney laid down the law and probed Betty. And she had bad memories about it. And they made up the story. But we won't know, right? So, whatever. The link for the story for the Betty and Barney Hill situation is also in the description to check it out. Also check out the video, the Tic Tac video. I really can't get enough of that video, but just something in the back of my mind is creeping in telling me that this is 4.2 far rubber dicking fake news. But again, the only way to really get over that is to see those so-called dozen or so other videos that are promised that we should see that also came from research into UFO that's more recent than not. So you make the call. Is Zeta Reticuli a place that we need to look at? Because I can tell you right now, we definitely need to keep our eyes on good old Mr. Robert Bigelow. The man is hoarding all the information. He's keeping it from us. He's keeping it from his own people. We are being left in the dark. And it may be for the love of money, for the growth of a corporation. But this information should be for all of us. Because at the end of the day, when E.T. comes down and he wants to probe every single one of you, I doubt that old Mr. Moneybags is going to prop his ass up and say, I'll take it for the team. With that, I'll check you guys out on Wednesday. And don't give up your booty for anybody. Ciao.